fails to do it. And now your host, Pastor Robert Scale. Welcome again to Jesus. This has some minutes and broadcasts. I'm Pastor Robert Scale. Oh, y'all better get ready. I'm teaching on understanding the flesh, your body. Let's get back in the word. You remember we with three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit's been born again, redeemed. Um, our soul only is saved through hearing and practicing the word of God. James 1, 21. Um, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. But be ye doers of the word, verse 22, and not hearers only deceiving your own self. That self is that wheel and flesh. Now, listen carefully now. The flesh, Jesus said, prophet nothing, John 6, 63. The flesh is a godless nature. It's a godless human nature. That means there is no God in the flesh and never will be. I used to think the flesh, you know, we could get him saved. I used to think that. And we, we done, I done got my flesh saved. He even act right now. But I come to learn, as the Lord Jesus taught me, that I was living more out of my spirit and wasn't fulfilling the lusts of my flesh. That means that flesh just laying that dead. The body is dead. The more you live the life of Christ through you, the more the body is dead. And the body don't operate. And, and so we, we got to understand how, and I'm going to teach you how. I don't know if I'll do it this week, but either this week or next week, I'm going to teach you how to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now let's look at some more scriptures. We, I read you yesterday, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. I, I, Paul said, but I put under my body. See, I is the spirit man. See, because there's no way you can say, uh, my body put under my body. But he said, but I put under my body and bring it, the body, into subjection. That means that you don't fulfill the lust and the passion. You, you read this again in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 24. It says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So when we belong to Jesus and Jesus is controlling us by the Holy Spirit, then we crucify the flesh. We put it to death where it don't get to operate. It don't get to function and live out that godless human nature when we belong to Jesus. You know, this is one thing I tell you. If, if you will get a hold of this, um, is telling Jesus constantly that you belong to him. Many Christians never learn this. Acknowledging his lordship over you constantly, daily, over and over, many times as you can see it, that, uh, Lord Jesus, I'm yours. I'm your servant. I belong to you. I acknowledge your lordship. I do it every day. Been doing it for, for ever since June 1988. I, I live in more instead of trying to live right. I don't try to live right. I live more in letting Jesus lord me, and then the Holy Spirit leads and guides me into truth of Jesus. See. And so I spend more time giving him permission to lord my will, lord my body, lord my spirit, lord me in every way. Now, what does this do? This allows your faith in Jesus, allowing him to lord you, giving him permission, acknowledging 
You belong to him. You're his. He can just do whatever he want to do with me. That's when you belong to somebody. You, you just give them the right to do whatever they want. Because uh, Jesus is, is sent from God. See? And I did that with my pastor and my spiritual father, Dad Hagen and Pastor Coward. Whatever they told me, I went and done it. Now, you can't do that to everybody. People can mislead you and misguide you because they're not led by the Holy Spirit. But Jesus told me. He told me to follow Brother Hagen until he died. And I did. Now, so they that are Christ, see, when you really belong to Jesus, then your faith in him will get Jesus to start teaching you how to rule your body. Rule it. Tell it what you're going to do. Instead of it telling you what you're going to do. And that's something I believe that's, that's, that's not taught enough. Is people trying to quit this, trying to do better, trying to do better. It's not faith in Jesus. When you try to do something, it's faith in Jesus. When you trust in him, rely and cleave to him, believe in him, adhere to him, and then his life is lived through you. Hallelujah. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's pick that back up where we left off at yesterday. And I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto come. Even as under babes in Christ. A babe Christian. I, I'm telling you all. 90, 95% of believers all over the world are babies. Ooh. Well. How you know that? But they're bodily rule. Let me, let, me, let me give you some examples of baby, baby Christians. They're very opinionated. Yeah, they'll tell you how they feel about something. I never tell people how I feel about nothing. I did the first couple of years I was saved because I was a baby Christian. They're bodily root. They, they, they give opinions. They, they, they like telling you what they think about stuff. They, they like to give you their little best information that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. They ain't even heard nothing from Jesus. Uh, they, 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 they'll watch anything on TV. People will ask for opinions and they'll give it. They'll hear about somebody doing something wrong and they'll say, well, you know, I, I wouldn't have done that if that was me. How you know? You might have did worse than that being put under the same pressure and circumstance they was under. How you know? Baby Christians uh, love to talk a lot. They love to tell you how they feel about stuff. They're quick to speak. The Bible say, be, let me read to you what the Bible say in James uh, chapter 1. It says, wherefore my, in verse uh, 19, my beloved brethren, let every man or woman be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath. Slow to I mean baby Christian, they ready to get people. They now I'm telling a baby Christian will will not be able to put up with you. Man, I can't take this no more. Baby Christians worry. Baby Christians have stress days, worry days. Baby Christians are bothered real easy, irritated real easy, frustrated real easy. Baby Christians have lots of fear. Now here, here's a big one for baby Christians. They always need to be loved. Now, it's okay to get loved. And it's okay to be loved. All of us want to be loved. But they need that. They need that to survive. When you're a baby Christian, you, you'll, you'll give love if you'll get it. 
And when you grow up, you live to give his love. And then you get blessed when you get it. I, I never give God's love trying to get something from people. When people in the flesh, when they're baby Christians, they, they always trying to make up stuff, fix something they done messed up, trying their hardest to, you know, do better this time. No, they just need to go in there and belong to Jesus. Belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Belong to Jesus. Lord, I give up. I lay my life down before you. I look to you, Lord. Teach me. Teach me, Lord Jesus, how to walk like you, talk like you, think like you, love like you, forgive like you. Teach me, Lord Jesus, how to be like you. And then, then he, he starts teaching you. You, you, know, you don't just overcome everything at once. He just work on here and then another one, then another one, then another one, then another one. Baby Christians always focus on what he ain't worked on. They, they can't focus on what he done work on. I always lived in what the Lord done me. I say, we'll get to you later. When he gets ready, you will lead my life forever. I trusted him to change me in this. And I believe he will. And so I, I don't keep fretting about that area still now. Because I'm trusting him. I know he's going to change me in it. And I saw him do it. Amen. And so ba baby Christians, babes, baby Christians, always thank you, thank you, feel it, feel it, thank you, thank you, thinking they right when they ain't. Baby Christians are real suspicious. I went to a church uh, one time. I was been on a tongue talking word church, faith church. And I don't know if they fake church. And uh, somebody came up beside me, checking me out. Checking me out. And uh, I went to another church up in Paducah, Kentucky. And uh, they, they, all the elders and all them, the deacons, they over there and laid hands on me and start banning the devil off of me. I said, y'all don't have no devil. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I fasted three days for this meeting. And they just in the flesh. Trying to think it out of their people. I'd go into prisons with them. Oh, Lord, I pray that your anointing be on It's already on You know, they, they should have been praying, thanking God for his spirit moving through me. And they trying to get me to get it. I already got it. He already called me an anointing. It's it's the Holy Spirit following you. It's utterance in the Holy Ghost. Speak boldly the word of God. Now you can pray that for me. You can pray, God, keep me from the evil one. Deliver me. But see, that's something going to come up. But, uh, you know, people pray, I I'm already a pastor. I'm already. You can't pray for me to be no pastor, no band. I'm already that. I'm already a teacher. He's already called me in the office of the prophet. Now, I'm not a prophet like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in Iraq. I'm not that kind of prophet. There are different kinds of prophets. There's different levels of evangelists. Different levels of apostles. No, I'm a prophet that brings revelation to the body of Christ. And I see things. People get close to me. I, I start seeing too much. And, uh, but it's to help them. The, the flesh say. People ruled by their emotion. I just don't feel like God loves me no more. But why do you hold on? The Bible tells you to believe that God loves you. Nobody asks you how you feel. I just, 
I just feel like I ain't gonna never be nothing. Woo! Well, now you got a feeling. And they 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 take them feelings, man. I mean like they they the, the Holy Ghost. Them feelings just as real to them. They're their babes in Christ. They're bodily root. I just can't keep, I just can't shut up. Yes, you can. You'll trust Jesus. Let the root. Let the Holy Spirit take over your tongue. Well, I, I just I just can't quit looking at pornography. Oh, yes, you can. Through Jesus who strengthens you. You can. And the flesh just, just wants you to think that you can't make it. It will make you, the, the, the flesh y'all loves pity parts. It loves to boast about itself. See, I be boasting about what Jesus done did in my life. I ain't had a depressed day in it's in June 30, 1988, a stress day, a worry day. Not one. That's not boasting in me. That's boasting in what the Lord done did in my life. I've looked to Jesus. Not often finish on the way. I never been laid on bills. Why? He answered my prayers and came through. I never paid anything late. The Lord came through. Every time he answered all my prayers. And he'll, he'll answer yours. If you abide in Jesus, John 15, 7, his words abide in you. But you're going to have to do some work with your faith to live that. Now, let's go to Romans. And this is a kicker here. Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 5. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Now listen carefully now. I'm going to start doing a little teaching in understanding the flesh. I'm trying to get you to understand the flesh, how it is. And then teach you how to not walk in. Verse uh, 5, for they that are after the flesh do man the things of the flesh. You, you, you can tell easy when people in the flesh because they are the witch. You. you know that it's the flesh when I tell people that you can live without sin if you trust in Jesus. Any area you trust in Jesus, you don't have to sin no more. You don't have to have a bad day. You don't have to be have financial trouble no more the rest of your life. You don't never have to be broke no more the rest of your life. And they flesh will rise up and say, oh no, ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. I know I'm trusting him to teach me. No. You're in practice. The flesh, y'all, loves church. Man, he plays church. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 5, it, it teaches us having a form of God, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. This form of godliness is people living church in the flesh. Some people just real silly in the Lord. Now there's a time of joy in the Holy Ghost. But some people think they both act like that all the time. Hmm. No, they're in the flesh. Um, when you have a form of godliness, you're talking this stuff and not living. Well, I know, I know I need to quit smoking. Your body's rooting you. Yeah, I know. I, I I tried to quit drinking. Your body's ruling. Yeah, I just curse sometimes. Your body's ruling you. Well, I love the Lord. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't love him. The Bible said in Romans, in John 14, 14, 21, he that have Jesus' commandments and keep them is the one that really loves him. The one that really loves him be loved by God. And God, Jesus said, I'm going to love him to manifest myself to him. A lot of people, Jesus ain't manifesting himself to them. You you wouldn't keep doing what you're doing if Jesus showed up. Mr. Perfect, all power in heaven and earth. 
Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and you can't quit doing that? Sometimes you, you, you got to press in with your faith. Some areas, y'all, you just believe God and that area gone. Other areas, boy, you got to press in. Quit trying to make all of them easy. Walk in the ones that are, and then keep pressing in to Jesus for the ones that are not. He'll come through for you. He did for me. And if I need some help, he'll do it again. Now, now listen. They that have the flesh are always man in the flesh. No, no, they made me bad. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. Oh, flesh. Flesh. That flesh is suspicious. What are they doing? What's going on? He's nosy. All you, 99% of these people on these TV shows, now, uh, they, they in the flesh. Here's what they're saying. We want to know your opinion about the president. Should he and his wife go have dinner? Well, it ain't none of your business if they go out for dinner. That stinking flesh ain't got no business meddling in them people's personal life. And you get thousands, hundreds, thousands of people. But I don't think this. But I think it's all right. But I think they should. Flesh, meddling. meddling. You're meddling in somebody else. The Bible tells you. Let me read to you. In 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 11. And that you study to be quiet. The word quiet means mind your own business. And the whole world is based on flesh. What's going on? I, I, I mean, I walked in when I was a baby Christian. People would come up and tell me stuff. Here, here's how they did it. This is how the flesh do. He slipped. They said, uh, did you hear about so-and-so? I said, no, what happened? Well, no, I, I really don't want to be, be talking about them. I said, no, we'll pray for them when we get through. Well, what happened? We never prayed. We were too shocked about what we heard. Flesh, babies, Jesus taught me to not even want to know unless I can help them and minister to them his love and really pray for them. I don't want to know what's wrong with everybody ministry. And this stuff done bled over in the church and, and people think it's okay. Competition is flesh. Want to be better than your brother and sister's flesh. You, 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 you want to clam up the pole. Run over everybody. Don't trust God to promote you. Flesh. All these reality shows are flesh. The Lord told me about world and music. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. First John 2.15. Any man love the world, love on the Father's not in it. You shouldn't listen to music that take you away from Jesus. And you never should listen to any kind of music where the person that's playing it or singing it serve the devil. Christians should never want to be influenced by ungodly people. We should not want to let what we hear, see, what we what we experience, we should never want ungodly people influencing us. Country, hip hop, rap, Marvin Gaye. You can't listen to Marvin Gaye and serve Jesus. You can't listen at the world and follow Jesus too. If, if somebody sings and it's not unbelief and doubt, it, they, they serve the Lord, ain't nothing wrong with their music. Music ain't bad in itself. Musical instruments are not bad. But I'm not going to listen to no jazz and you up here smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer. 
not finna listen to nothing and you don't live for Jesus. I don't want you influencing me with that spirit on me. Christians should never follow people who live ungodly. There are people on TV. I won't watch their movie. I, listen, they, they in religion and promoting their religion. I won't watch nothing they eat. I don't want them influencing me. Amen. And so I'm going to pick this back up in Romans chapter 5. I got to talk about that flesh a little bit more. Listen, I want to make available to you understanding your body, your flesh, this godless human nature. This is a six CD series. On the screen is our address. Write this address down. Get your pencil and paper. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus is the Answer Ministries or Robert Scales Ministries. Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And I'll pay the shipping and handling. I'll get these right out to you. Saints, I'm, I'm going to make available to you all of these next week. Um, they will just absolutely change your life. So order these today. I'll get them right out to you. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus Answer Church. Saints, a church that's alive is worth the drive. If you're truly hungry, hungry for real truth, to, to, to please Jesus, to really serve him and follow him, oh, you will love Jesus and church. We ain't got no strife. 60% of that church is white. Huh? Yeah, I tell y'all that so some of y'all whites can come. So you can be taught who you really are in Christ. And um, God is just moving in the church. It's unity. There's no strife. Nobody arguing with me. Nobody fighting me. Nobody fighting the saints, each other. If it rises up, it gets killed. Amen. So come, you'll be blessed. Well, my time's up. I want to thank my partners and friends. Saints, I just believe, I know the Lord wants me to take this around the world. It started right here with you. So pray about helping me. Amen. We need. I need your support. Thank you for being a blessing. I, I, God wants me to get cameras. He wants me to get studio. He wants me to, 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 to bring this into the church where you can see the church. Well, my prayer for you is you will know the love of Christ that has his knowledge and be filled with the fullness of God. From Jesus as a I'm Pastor Rob Scales. Remember now, as Christ loved you on the cross, took your sins away. Go give that to your brother and sister. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>